Hey everybody. Well, you guys all get joined in. I'm going to try and get this camera adjusted right. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Welcome to Nails Over Coffee. I'm trying to get my camera adjusted right so you can see my hands here. Oh, that works quite nicely, actually. Um, cool. All right. And I even have my studio lights up so you can actually see. Um, so hello, hello. It takes me a second for me to get to be able to see your comments um, just because of how I have my camera set up. So it's facing me so I can see your comments at all. So um, hi, I'm assuming everybody's saying hi. I'm trying to see the more comments, the more they feed further up the screen so I can actually see them. Otherwise, I kind of have to lean a little bit. I'm wondering if I can move this a little bit. Hi. Oh, we have Suki here too. Yay. Yay. Okay. So welcome to Nails Over Coffee. Hi. I'm your, you know, hostess with the mostess, Michelle Cordes Pugh. So today... We don't have protein drink over coffee like Suki does. Today we have the Disneyland cup because I'm feeling my Disneyitis flare up. It's like Pooh's blustery day outside today. So that's this. Okay, so we're going to talk about a few other things while I'm soaking off. But the first thing I want to get started on doing is, uh, and I can obviously only do one hand while I'm live, um, but I am going to put this hand in my soak off bags, the well, soak off bag that I will have up for sale on the University of Nails webpage as soon as I can get to that on my to do list. So um, the first thing I'm going to do, well, and I suppose there's probably going to be people still joining in here for a minute, is I'm going to use my Atwood Mean Green Bit. And I'm going to move all my phones out of the way here and my coffee so I don't cover like everything in the world in dust. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Atwood Mean Green Bit. I'm going to take my rings off. Acetone, we all know, doesn't really necessarily hurt rings, but replace a watch or a ring or two and you start to um, figure out that you probably should just have people take their jewelry off. It, acetone will hurt opals. And black onyx though so don't even screw around with those if somebody is wearing an opal a black onyx or a pearl um, make sure that that jewelry gets nowhere near the acetone as I said replace a few and you you know so the first thing I do is I use my Atwood bit to take off any gel sealant that I have on if you know your guest is going to soak off at the next appointment, do yourself a favor and use all soak off products on top of the acrylic because it makes your life way easier. But since I use a sealant that is soak off but requires buffing to soak off, um, I'm going to, and I have color um, gel polish on, I'm just going to go ahead and this bit does a really good job of taking down a lot of bulk at the same time, so that helps with your soaking off process. And I'm sure that at some point, Nicole Atwood is going to watch this video and she's going to tell me a better way to use this bit, but in the meantime, this is how I use it on myself, and for the most part, how I use it on my clients. Um... And I know it sounds like scary. Yeah, it does work really good for removing lifting. And I know that it's like super scary to have your drill turned up this high. But trust me when I tell you, if you're going to use the Mean Green or the Texas Tornado or those types of bits from Atwood, or if you're going to use like some of the more coarse bits, do yourself a favor and turn the drill up e-file, whatever, turn the e-file up because it's way less likely to catch. And um, so that's way easier. So I got to make sure, now make sure you get anything off that is soak off because, or that is um, 
a sealant or any of that kind of stuff because if it's not acetone proof, like I have some people that I seal with Master Fill, which is of course not soak off from Masterworks. And if I've sealed somebody with Master Fill, I have to make sure that I get every single little bit of that Master Seal off. But you can see with the Atwood bit, this goes by pretty quickly. So that, okay. Now from there, I could go straight into the soak off bags, but if I am so inclined, sometimes I will take my one cuts and just go ahead and take the length down because again, that's all the less time to spend in the bags. So it only takes a couple of minutes, but it looks like that. Okay. And so now I'm going to take, this is a soak off bag. It's acetone proof plastic. Okay. So there it is. Um, and I'm going to take my pure acetone and I'm going to pour just a little bit in the bag. You don't need a whole lot. Okay. And I'm going to take and put my hand in here clench my fingers all together and you're going to have to give your clients instructions on how to do this. It's way easier to do on them than it is to do on yourself. And then I'm going to take a regular old rubber band, the kind that you get from, you know, in the bags from an office supply store. Now, if you look, you can see that all of my nails are in the liquid, okay, or in the acetone. Now, what you're going to instruct your guests to do is swish. Swish a lot. Wiggle. Swish. They can do just about anything they want to do in there because it keeps their nails in the acetone. And what they're actually going to feel, I'm going to put a mitt over it. This keeps them from looking at it, which takes even more time. Plus, it keeps the heat in. So, and you just have to tell your guests, elbows down, wrist bent, and they just set their fingers down in the acetone and wiggle. That's it. And so now I'm going to set the timer on my phone for 10 minutes and we'll go back to talking about the other things we're going to talk about. And I'll bring my coffee back over here and I'm going to try to remember to keep squish, swishing while I'm talking because that's going to be the only uh, variable in this equation is I'm going to get sidetracked by talking and not swish. So when I need to soak somebody off, I book an extra 15 minutes in before their appointment um, to do this. I do it um, at only a $5 extra charge for my regular clients. Um, it starts at $15 on up for new clients um, unless they're paying a full price full set. If they're paying a full price full set, I include it um, soaking off whatever they have um, in the price. Um, the other thing... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I know you've been kind of coming and going, Liz. Um, so I put people in the mitt and the bag and I start them soaking off. And then while that's happening, I'm doing the console with them, talking about what we're doing with their new set um, or whatever. This is a really cool, easy way to do it for a no muss, no fuss, no fumes. I, I've got everything kind of locked in here. So it's not like sitting with a bowl or any of that kind of stuff. It keeps the body heat in too, so it goes really fast. There's no evaporation of the acetone really. So, and it just has their fingertips in there. Um, so it's not as um, drying as doing that. And, you know, okay, so sometimes, you know, your clients come in and you look at their nails and as you're prepping them for their fill, you think this ish is going to be, um, right? <laughs> nice, Suki. <sighs> It's a family show. Um, so, uh, we, um, or maybe you weren't saying anything about that and it's me and you know, I should be saying it's a family show. But the thing about it is clients come in and they sit down and we look at their nails and we start prepping them and then we think, shit, a full set would be easier. Like those kind of people. If you're going to spend more than about 18 or 19 minutes on prep, soak them off. Soak them off, 
It takes you a couple minutes to take all the top layers off, to cut them down, to get them in the bags, 10 minutes to soak them off, and then only like two or three minutes to prep them. If their nails are that trashed, charge them an extra five bucks on top of whatever you were going to charge them and save yourself the headache and soak them off. So, but this is also good for people who come in with product from someplace else that we don't know what it is, but we're pretty sure it's not MMA. We just don't know what it is. Gel polish. You know, there's some gel polishes that aren't really meant to be natural nail services. They're more like an enhancement service. And you've got to buff them to remove the shine. And they take like 20 minutes to soak off and with foil wraps. And you got to unwrap them and you got to do all that kind of stuff. Save yourself the headache. Take your e-file, take the shine off of them, and plop them in some soak-off bags. Let them sit for 10 minutes, take them out, get whatever's on there off, put your own stuff on, and tell them this time it's an extra $10 charge to soak you off. Next time you won't have to pay that. If you come back to me and still have the product I put on you on, I waive that charge when I'm removing my own product. Like... We need to stop doing the whole headache thing. Okay, well, since I'm down to six minutes on my timing here, I'm going to talk about the other thing I want to talk about, which is brand loyalty. So there's a blog post today on the Nailscape about the CND Creative Play polish line. Now, as somebody who's used CND for years, my towel's falling off my lap, um, I'm a little irritated because this looks a whole lot like color and effects which I loved and I was furious when they discontinued like I lived with them discontinuing the old polish line because they brought a lot of the colors back in shellac and then they brought out color and effects and I was like well that's really cool and so I did a lot of good stuff with color and effects but color and effects was an advanced product you couldn't treat it like a regular polish line that you were just pedal poking your way along polishing because it dried too fast. And a lot of people complained about it. So when color and effects went away, I was furious. And then Vinylux came out and I'm like, yay, I'm glad you guys made it that it matches shellac. But I had already figured out all of the color and effects combinations to match the shellac. And now I've got this stuff that takes forever to take off toes in the summertime if people go for six weeks in between appointments. And so now there's shellac and there's Vinylux and now there's creative play. Make friends with your local beauty supplier. Um, my local Cosmoprop that's right near me, I go in there and just hang out and talk to them. So I got to watch a video that's in their intranet on um, the slick pour from Young Nails, which looks really cool when you see the little like product knowledge video for it real quick like. Um, so they showed me that because I'm a regular and I hang out in there and talk to them and give them information. But they had the new CND spa line and we spent probably 30 minutes looking for everything they have talking about whether the current spa manicure line, spa pedicure line stuff has officially been discontinued yet. And according to Cosmoprof North America, it hasn't yet. Which I don't know if that's because they have so much back stock in their warehouse because it caught them off guard. Or if they're going to keep some of it and not others. Or they're waiting to see what the backlash is when people think they're going to discontinue it. And so they keep some. I don't know. All I know is that I wouldn't be heartbroken if they discontinued the citrus spa manicure line because it is a very nice line and it's really smells nice and everything and um it's a good comparable smell scent to the um it's a very comparable scent to the citrus spa manicure line but the gardenia one while not as floral as i thought it was going to be it's definitely more earthy and i do like it it's not almond and Okay, I don't know. Maybe you guys agree with me. This is why I got rid of OPI in my salon 10 years ago. Is because if you're changing over product lines so often that your average nail tech can't keep up with 15 new colors a year 
and 24 being discontinued and six coming back and this getting discontinued and this coming out and all that kind of stuff. And they're even getting to a point, they were even getting to a point that they were discontinuing some of their mainstays. They were actually discontinuing some colors out of their main L whatever number lacquer line. And I finally had enough. I couldn't keep up with it. I constantly have a discontinued polished bottled basket in my salon selling bottles that I paid $5 a bottle for, for a dollar so that I can get it out so I can make room for the new colors that I've now paid $5 a bottle for. And then at any given time, I might be able to walk into your mass retailer and find a bunch of OPI polishes there in the nail aisle. I was done. I was over it. I'm all about brand loyalty, but I had it. And I used OPI for the first nine years of my career. And after that, I was like, dude, I'm done. I'm out. Like, I'm over it. Okay, well, I don't know how you guys feel about all that, but CMB is walking a real thin line with me now about this. And I can't wait till it comes all the way out. So I'm sure the ambassadors have things they'd like to say, but can't because they know more than the public knows, but they can't say anything until it's actually been released. So I'm going to be really interested to hear what the ambassadors have to say about all of this um, once the products are all the way launched and released. But, dude, I've, I've had enough. I'm starting to get pissed. From a business owner standpoint, I don't have A time for redoing what my process steps are in every time my brand decides they're going to change some little thing. I don't have, I use the same brand because it looks good on my table. Um, before we're done, if I could show you, I have sitting on my table, almond moisture lotion, solar oil, cool blue, 99% IPA. I have scrub fresh sitting right off the side of my table. I have branded shellac sitting right here. Part of the reason why you use all of one brand is because it looks professional. Okay, but if you keep changing logos, labeling, bottles, all that kind of stuff, what's my advantage? What's, oh, there's the timer. There's 10 minutes. Um... What's the advantage to not switching lines? And I understand like you needing to change things up every once in a while to change, you know, but good grief. I've had about enough. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, so you guys can put your thoughts up and type them in while I'm futzing with this if you would like, or you can watch me do this. So I'm going to take my hand out. Okay, I'm just going to set that off to the side. And now here's the thing. I'm going to scrape off what's soft and you gotta work quick because every time this dries, it gets harder and harder again, which is why when people try to soak off their nails at home and they can't stand leaving their hands in anything, they end up taking like four hours to soak their nails off. The key is you've gotta leave them in there. Gotta leave them in. So most of my stuff came off pretty good. There's just a few. I had one nail that was super thick because it was colored acrylic. And so I'm going to go ahead and... So here's the deal. If I leave them in for 10 minutes and there's still a lot of product on here, and no, before anybody freaks out, I'm not scraping on the natural nail. I'm totally on acrylic. There's nothing I'm scraping on the natural nail. So it looks like this. Can't hang out for long. Got to stick my hand back in here. And I'm going to leave it in here for another five minutes. And that's the max. That is the max I am going to, and this probably would have done better if I would have, I know I, I know I quit wiggling sometimes. Like I totally know I did. Um, so I'm going to set my timer for five minutes and I'm going to keep swishing. And, um, oh no, not 15. Ah, cancel. Five, wrong direction. Okay, iOS challenged apparently. Um, the other thing is, if you will notice, I don't know if you guys can see from your angle, but I have um, 
a, a soft landings towel down on the table. It's really important that you have a disposable table towel down when you do this. Otherwise, you make a holy jeebus mess. So you need to have a table towel down for when you do all of the e-file dust removing of the color or the sealant or whatever. And then fold that bad boy over so you're not sitting with your arms in it and use that when all for all of your scraping and everything and then when you're all done you can take your table towel and you can um, put your bags in and wrap the rubber band really tightly around the top wrap the table towel around the whole thing like a little you know bundle and um, and take and set it down set it off to the side um if you have a rubber if you have one of the rubber bands like if you're doing two hands you take one of the rubber bands to bind the tops of the two bags together really tight so they're sitting up and nothing spills bundle it up with the table towel and wrap the other rubber band around the top so it makes a little bundle and set it off to the side for you to deal with when you're done with your client um with the acetone that's left uh, for proper disposal but don't get me started on that because everybody should have a separate container um, for proper acetone disposal. Um, but so brand loyalty, I'm really interested to hear what you guys have to say about this because I'm, I'm starting to get really sort of ticked off. You know, I have talked before about the fact that I got the CND LED lamp as soon as I could get it on a you know deal that I could afford um, My UV lamp is a CND UV lamp. I'm totally a shellac girl. I'm shellac certified all of that um, I was really mad when they released Express 5 top coat at the same time as the lamp and they made it sound like through their marketing and I'm a marketing major they made it sound like um, you needed to have, because people kept saying, well, can I cure my old shellac? And they were answering questions like, yes. And with the new Express 5 top coat, it'll only take five minutes to remove. And it only takes a minute for each coat to cure in your UV lamp or in your LED lamp and all that kind of stuff. And they made it sound like it was the Express 5 top coat that made it LED compatible. And then to find out that when I actually sat down and read the instructions that that wasn't true at all, I sort of felt like I'd been had. And so I used all of the Express 5 top coat that I had to buy to get the deal with my lamp. And then I heard they were going to discontinue the regular shellac top coat and I was pissed. And so apparently I wasn't the only one because they backpedaled pretty quickly and said, no, 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 we're going to keep the original shellac top coat. And I'm like, thank God, because I like the original shellac top coat. It takes eight minutes to soak off instead of five, but it stays shinier and it stays on better on people who are prone to peeling. And I didn't want the Express 5 top coat. And so I was mad that I spent $25 on a bottle of it because I thought I had to have it. And then when I found out that I didn't have to have it, then I thought I was going to have to use it because they were discontinuing the old one. And so by that time, I had run out of a bottle. So I had to go out and spend another $25 on a bottle of crap I didn't want. And then I find out, no, they're not discontinuing it. So, But I can't waste product. So now I've been stuck using a top coat that I can't stand on the people that I can get away with using it on. Well, I had to go out and spend, wait for it, another $25 on another bottle of top coat so I can use it on the people that need the regular shellac top coat until the stupid Express 5 is done. Dude, if we were talking about anything else besides nail products for our little you know, professional gig we do, would we put up with this out of a product if Coach or Mac, or Bare Essentials, or Michael Kors, or whoever constantly did this turnover with stuff. If Estee Lauder never kept any of the stuff that people have been using for 25 years, we'd be pissed. We'd go find another brand and we would never come back. You would think that Revlon and Cody would get this concept, but apparently they don't. Maybe they should have hired me when I applied for the director of marketing for CND at Revlon in New York. Oh, there's my chimes again. So now we've gone through another five minutes. So this is it. This is the last I'm going to do of this. So taking off 
my mitt. My hand is pretty darn warm in here right now. The acetone is pretty warm. So I'm going to take that off. And I'm going to set it off to the side. And this is the last time I'm going to scrape. And most of this is going to come off this time. I can feel it. It's okay if it doesn't go quite down to the bare natural nail. You want it to just be really, really close. Um, okay, I'm trying to do this at an angle that you guys can see. But you want it to be really close, but not so much that you're scraping on the natural nail. Because you're going to have to do something of something on the top of the nail anyway. If they are removing and staying removed, you are going to want to, you know, buff the rest of whatever is left off and IBX them anyway. And if they are um, not, if they're getting a new set put back on, well, you got to prep them to for application anyway. So, you know, leaving that tiniest little bit keeps you from scraping on the natural nail. And, oh, holy Moses, of course, this is on myself. Welcome to being a nail tech. My thumbnail is thick because that's what we do when we're doing our own nails, right? Okay, so I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to bundle it up, just like I said. Now, in this particular instance, I don't have another rubber band because I wasn't using both. But So I'm going to grab another rubber band. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to bundle it all up. And if I had two bags in there, I would do the same thing. And I'm going to take the other rubber band and go like that. And now I'm going to set this off to the side so it's out of my way for what I want to do. So then from here on out, this is what my nails look like right now. As you can see, my skin isn't all like white and dry and nasty. And there's just the thinnest, you can look from down the barrel, there's just the thinnest little bit of product left. So I wasn't scraping on the natural nail. So now while we continue our discussion about brand loyalty, I'm going to take my 100 grit file and get the rest of this off this thumb. That was a million miles thick because it's myself. And um, let's talk about brand loyalty while I'm doing this. So how do you guys feel? What brands do you normally use um, in the salon? And they didn't change the formula in CND to make it. No, they didn't. They didn't change the formula. It's the exact same shellac. They just calibrated a lamp that would work within the existing formula. And the new colors may be different, which might be why they discontinued the UV lamp now. But seeing as they're still selling bulbs for it, I would imagine no. But that's the reason why you can't mix shellac is because every color is formulated differently. So that's why you can't mix colors. That's why you have to layer, not mix. So, yeah, no, they didn't reformulate shellac. Right? Isn't that awesome? Um, oh, and somebody wanted me to talk a little bit about... So we're talking about brand loyalty and all that kind of stuff. Um... I got a sample of a product. So I tried the Elegant Glass Nails Acrylic on a Periscope trial. And it was a really great acrylic. It just wasn't my style. It's generally made for um, sculpting reverse. And I'm just not a sculpting and reverse method kind of girl. So I, um, so I, it wasn't my favorite, but it was a good product. Um, but... At the same time, Tiffany Cordoza sent me um, a uh, sample of a product called Suspension Gel. And Suspension Gel is a gel that is designed to be used on a natural nail or over enhancements that you put pigments or glitters or whatever else it is you're going to put in there. And um, nail mail. And... Um, you just set it down, honey. Um, thank you. Then um, you, it doesn't let it, them sink. So you can mix pigments and glitters and everything into this gel and they don't sink, um, which is really super cool. So you can get that. I want to try it out um, on the new full set I do today um, later using, um, I want to try it out with a blue pigment and um, a blue and a silver 
hologram kind of glitter and um, see if I can come up with something that's a Disney 60th uh, celebration color nail because to me that's something that that blue is something that I want to have like some huge depth on and so I want to see how to do that so okay so if I was doing a client right now this would be going along much faster because we all know it takes forever on ourselves but I would also be I'm prepping at the same time as I'm knocking this last little bit of stuff off here if I was getting ready to reapply I would be as soon as I'm done with this I would be going to put on forms and start sculpting so here in a second I'm going to show you guys the final product here so remember if you're doing this on all 10 it never takes much more time to do all 10 than it does to do five like it doesn't take double the time so um, I would be pretty much prepped here and ready to go if I was reapplying make sure I get my cuticle area again because I'm just gonna wear gloves when I do my clients later um and so now, if I, I'm going to use my towel, but if I was with a client, I would be using a disposable plastic manicure brush. But there we go. I'm all bare, and I'm prepped, and I'm ready for application. So that's how I get away with whenever there is a problem, I am not going to spend forever trying to figure out what is on their nails unless I can tell, and you can tell MMA. It's usually kind of yellowy and cloudy. Um, it smells weird when you use your e-file on it. It smells almost perfumey. Um, you can tell when it's MMA. So if it's your own client, you know it's not MMA. And if it's um, coming from somebody else, if it's a powder dipping system, those are cyanoacrylate based. They soak off in 20 minutes. So same kind of thing. Like it's still not going to take you long. It's easier to just get rid of what's on there than mess around with something that's going to maybe it's old product. It's going to give you center pocket lifting. They're a bartender, barista, banger and basher on their nails. And you're just going to end up doing three repairs between now and their next appointment anyway, because you can see where their nails aren't going to hold up because the acrylic looks like crap. Save yourself the time and trouble. Charge them an extra five bucks. Soak it off. Use the soak off bags. Um, the soak off bags are going up on the University of Nails site in a package of a hundred, which is plenty for people in the salon. A hundred will last you, like even with a full clientele, will last you for a really long time. Um, my target price, I want to be able to bring them to you guys at ten dollars, including shipping. They are a pound to ship when I went and weighed them the other day, so I have to get on the postal site and see for bulk postage purchase if I can mail it for cheaper. Otherwise, I might have to bump that price up by a dollar or something to compensate for the shipping. So it'll be around $10, and those will last you like forever. So um, that's the show for today, unless you guys have anything for me. Oh, I can take my glasses off now. It's hard to look at you guys that far away with my glasses on. I'm surprised I could see anything you guys were typing in there at all. So, anything else you guys have for me today? Now that I'm done with this, I'm going to have to take the color off this hand and remove it. Are you um, sh going to be shipping to Canada? Um, I would love to ship to Canada. In fact, I would love to ship anywhere. Um... I'll just need to, I'll evaluate the postage rate for um, international and see what I can, um, how cheap I can get it for you guys. I just really want it to be affordable for you guys. Like, there's no point in having a bunch of crap in the salon that it's another thing that it might solve a problem, but it's just more money you got to spend on stuff you got to have sitting around. So I would really, um, I'm trying to keep the price down for you guys as much as I can. Um... Luckily, I found a supplier that it's the same price no matter how much quantity I buy. 
So that's good because I'm able to get you guys a consistent price for me to buy it at. So once I figure out the shipping thing, um, I'll be able to have a definitive answer. I'm going to look at that just as soon as I get a chance here. Um, I, yeah, I'd love to ship anywhere. Um, we live in a global society. And plus, you know, I'm really close to Canada. I'm a three-hour drive with traffic um, from Canada. So if I have to do something like, I don't know, drive up to Vancouver and deliver some to somebody who's going to send them out within Canada, like, you know what I mean? Like, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. I'm just a nail tech like everybody else, so just trying to figure it out. Um, all right. Well... That's 35 minutes. So, you guys have anything else for me? I'm going to go back to my gargantuan monster to-do list that all of us nail techs do have before our side work is what I call it because I used to be a waitress. So, it's side work that we have to do before around our guests. So, oh my gosh, it is like pouring out here. I want more glitter in my shellac. Um, used it from day one. That's what's disappointing. You know, that's the thing is that like glacier mist, glacial mist that came out in one of the collections, I don't know, a couple collections ago, um, had a lot of glitter in it. And I really liked it because then when I put the top coat on, it still had those big little octagon glitters in it, but it was super pretty. But I didn't have the lumpy bumpiness of the Rockstar where I feel like I need to put two coats of top coat on. Um, so yeah, I would definitely like to see some more glitter colors. But at the same time, they have so many pigments and effects that I kind of understand why they don't. But... Those are small glitters and fine glitters and dusting on of colors and those kind of things, not the chunkier glitters, which I really like the elegant glass glitters. So let's see, they're too much work. Um, it can be. I don't find I have too much work. I use an old um, CND gel brush, um, whatever this is, uh, a number six, an old gel oval number six. Um, and I use this for putting my glitter um, into the inhibition layer. And if I am, I don't know where it is, somewhere around here I have an old wooden um, handled acrylic brush that um, I use for putting, for dusting additives in because I like how the um, sable picks up the, the pigment powders better than the this. I use this for glitter. So when I put it in the inhibition layer, I don't find that it takes me um, too much extra work, but you will come back on to show us, show you what, when I do my nails? Yeah, I mean, I can. It's going to be really late because I've got clients and then dinner and stuff, but for you guys on the East Coast, it'll be really late, but I suppose you can watch the replay. So if you guys really want to watch me do my nails, I sculpt my left hand. I used, well, Monica, I think you're out here on the West Coast. So, yeah, I guess you're up late, too. Um, I, uh, I sculpt on my left hand, and I use tips on my right hand. Because I just find that I can't get the structure good enough for my dominant hand for how much I use it um, with these. Yeah, that's right. I knew you were in California, Monica. So... Fred's new. Um, so, yeah. So, um, okay, well, later on tonight, when I get a chance to do my nails, I will pop back on and bring you guys with me. I kind of like this angle that I've got um, the camera set up at. Um, post it up on the page. I'm going to do nails after my workout, so if you're up, I can watch. Uh, yes, after your workout, which is like happens at like midnight Suki time. Um, yeah. I, uh, I like, like I said, I like this angle. Um, this angle actually works pretty well for me having both hands, um, to share with you guys. So I will post, um, the Nailscapes blog with the link of the CND creative play. Um, yeah, you can definitely see me at this angle. It's just hard because this is my client's angle. So, but I 
think I can probably shift you guys off to the side when I'm doing a client's nails for demo. I think I can probably shift you guys off to the side. Um, and I have my, to this side maybe, I've got my my um, studio light up on this side. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe a little change of scenery. Maybe we'll hang out here instead of in the chair with the backdrop for a while. Anywho. Um, all right, guys. Well, peace out. I'm going to skedaddle so I can look up some of this postage stuff. Now that I'm done soaking off, I'm going to put my rings back on. Um, and I will catch up with you guys later. All right. Toodaloo. Toodaloo, toodaloo. Toodles. See you guys.